back to you all. Hope you guys are all okay. So reverse order, if you haven't seen the running session November 2020, new updates on the layout, check out that video. Um, that will feature everything that I've been doing just recently to try and get the layout up to some sort of speed. Now, it was always my intention to make the layout look like Old Oak Common, um, all around that sort of area, Wormworth Scrubs, uh, Acton, North Acton, all them surrounding areas. And I've tried to bring all these little tiny features and capture them on my layout, because uh, it's where I grew up as a kid. So what I've done, completely rebuilt a lot of this area. Um, I've done a lot of work here, as you might have caught glimpse. Um, I think this is the prime feature of the layout that really ties the whole lot back together again. Um, and it was something I wanted to do for a long, long time. Um, but I feel like my modeling skills have progressed by doing lots of other little uh, weathering and things like that. I've learning, obviously been doing regrassing and stuff for, for years and I still can't do it. I still struggle doing grass work, but um, I'm finding my own ways of doing things and uh, it's starting to work. So. Uh, I think this is where you revisit a layout and this is where I am because I feel a bit more confident in doing things now. So um, I've had to compile this video as short as I can because um, it absolutely took me weeks upon weeks to do this work and hours upon hours to build some of the structures. Um, this structure here alone, the bridge, uh, which is Mitre Bridge at Old Oak, uh, that's taken me 38 to 40 hours before I've even painted it. So there's a lot of work and it's all plastic sheet card that's been I've had to make jigs up to make the eye beams and all that kind of thing so it's not bought in material it's just sheets of plastic card and it's all constructed bit by bit and it's taken me hours upon hours to build but the final result with all the rivets and everything on now really happy with it uh, without going overboard so what I think we'll do we'll have a look at the well, some of the work I've been doing and enjoy some of the detailing I've been adding and I say if you haven't checked out the running session please do and you'll see the whole layout in its entirety. So taking a look at the original corner as you see the little red building I've got the back there behind the bus um, this was it, it was good but it just didn't really um, complement the scene of this corner it was it, it really represented the original road uh, which is what this is actually based on so for this I need a, an area that um, the buses can carry on so I'm thinking of um, doing away with this little building um, and probably putting a bridge in here so I think getting rid of this this then creates me a bit more space and a bit more room to do uh, a desired effect that will actually match in now this has given me an idea with my arms all stretched out uh, of a bridge um, and there's lots of bridges around Old Oak Common so this has really inspired me to build um, this area so I think from this point onwards it's all about taking some measurements uh, working out what's going to suit, what's going to look, and then uh, creating something to be uh, more desirable. So let's measure up, get some plans, and see where we go. So I often think creating a little cardboard template is a very good way to get a look at what you need. So I think uh, this gives me a rough idea. So I think we'll create something a bit more structural to get a shape and some sort of design. So I think we'll fast forward and build something a little bit more suiting um, are based around this. So as you can see, I'm literally just odd bits of cardboard to get some sort of form to shape. And I think this is the best thing. Hoover it out, clear everything out of the way, and then fit it and have a look at what it looks like. So this is where we strip everything that I've done originally. Um, I think it's good to do this and start afresh. I'd like a little bit of a heel on this. Now I've taken a look at Google Earth and I've looked at the original plans of Old Oak Common and the bridge in question, which is what that white tent, which is called Mitre Bridge. The bridge at the back, what people call Mitre Bridge is actually the old Scrubs um, Road Bridge. So the idea is to create something like that over this area, uh, thinking this is the Scrubs Lane um, so it'll be all the park uh, behind where I'm actually doing now. So this will be good to have this bridge literally coming across the angle that you're looking at. Um, and obviously have a new sort of banking that sort of just brings that level of eye away from the actual field and the track. So 
this is something that I, I plan to revisit and I think this is a good time to actually do all this work. So from this point onwards it's using um, Terraformer Plaster of Paris cloth and that was what is what's used to make my hillsides and I'm just painting it over with a rustic uh, colorant which is acrylics um, I've got loads of this stuff it's brown so it does really well and then it's just a case of digging up some earth from the garden fine sipping it through its to a refined sort of spec that I need to use and then just actually gluing that in place on top of the hillside So looking back at the um, Google Earth image, uh, we can see at the bottom where it pans down, that is the tracks that used to go to Old Oak Common Depot. Now that is now Old Oak Common Station or will be in the very soon future. Um, as we pan up to the right hand corner, top right hand corner, that is North Pole Depot as it lays uh, or did as it time when it was there. So um, for me, it ties in really well with the layout. Uh, so it was ideal to make a little bridge uh, like mitre bridge now using my little bandsaw and mind your fingers and use your guard i used about seven sheets of plastic card to build this bridge now it's i did not film any of this because it's taken me 38 hours just to build this uh, and then it's all about adding small details like rivets that kind of thing um, so this ties in really well with the layout because it's based around old oak common so with this it's a decision now what supports the bridge So it's a time to think what kind of brickwork to use. Now I wanted engineering brickwork, which is a very darky brown color, because that ties in pretty much with the rest of the layout. Uh, and that wall, that famous wall that you see under Mitre Bridge. So this red brickwork really doesn't work very well. And I've got sheets of this paperwork. So it's either use this, spray it over, or I download um, one of the uh, uh, current kits, uh, that you can print out at home and I use printer cartridge so that's going to cost me more to download more to print out um, so it's what have I got to hand that I can use so after rooting around my little box of spares I, ha I have got quite a few sheets of the old wheels uh, printed embossed brickwork so these will work well for the bridge structure um, and I think if I color them the right colors um, these will match in with the printed sheets that are existing on my wall so I think from this point onwards, uh, I'm going to put it all together and start building um, some kind of bridge. And from this point onwards, this is what I've uh, come up with. So I think from this point, uh, we'll marry this up with the layout and see what it actually looks like. So the idea is to have that there. I've had to put some little bits of balsa wood just to level this up because um, I just need to lift the back section. Now I've carried on with creating some scenery. Um, I can change that, it's just basically giving me an idea. That's purely to hold the next bit. Now if you remember, I did come across, I've lost it, a little bit of walling, which was this bit here. Um, and I've just sanded it down and cut a little bit off. And that actually fits quite nicely in that gap. So I think we'll add that to there. And that gives me a little bit of a, a gap just behind here that I can add bushes and trees so that it doesn't look like the bushes stop here. They actually will go from behind and round. So the idea is they don't get a, a very staticky look. They'll get a, an open look like that. So that's really what I'm looking at. Uh, so the, scene, the trees will actually go behind the scenery. So that's where I'm looking with that. Um, so I'm having that gap there. That'd be quite cool to fill with foliage. And then like so what, what you're actually looking is come back a little bit so as you can see from this scene here um, we have our bridge portal which basically gives a nice little uh, run through for our bus i just painted this bus up with some uh, was it this one no that one I just painted that one up to match this one so um that's quite a good little job so yeah that looks like the bus can go underneath there it's got a journey it can then travel down traverse down a road it drops down below the track and obviously the wall would be a retaining wall that keeps this side of the railway the muck and all the rest of it so i can drop the wall down i think and i can catch all my lovely scenery um, and then this will be the bridge bit 
Now we've made the bridge bit. Um, I've just got to spray it over. This is taken a complete age, but as you can see, I've got to this point um, and that will sit on there like that. So that gives me a uh, mitre bridge, uh, old oak common. And then that gives uh, a look of the famous wall you see with the bridge bit of mitre, uh, the mitre bridge at old oak common. So it almost sort of ties in just with a break of a little bit of scenery in the middle. And I think that works really well. And it is located on the one wood scrubs end and on the bridge bit there. Well, obviously the canal will be on the back. So it's to represent, it's not to be 100% because it's a model railway. It's representation of Old Oak Common because it identifies so many different areas of the area. And that's pretty much the view from the other side. And I think it gives that iconic look um, and it's what I'm after really what I'm trying to achieve. Um, seeing the bridge and the walling. Obviously the bridge is only half a bridge. Um, you won't see the other side, which is, looks a bit yuck. Um, but then once I dress this bit here, uh, I'll add some brickwork and then finish the bridge off. Um, once I've done that, um, that would look quite neat. I'm just gonna put a, a fascia over the back here and sort that out. Um, so look, it'd be a dead end. Um, yeah, long way to go. Um, happy with that so far. I think just keep playing around, keep adding stuff and uh, we'll see how this all turns out. So I've completed the, um, the structure bit on the walls. I've added a lot of detail to this. I've actually quite enjoyed doing this. I've really been pushing my modeling skills to actually add more detail because I see so many people do it. Um, and Tony Northeastern is one for detail and um, I just love the way he just throws things and comes up with an amazing result. So he's been really inspiring to me. Um, so yeah i've carried on with the uh the wall in and um all the parts and drain pipes and all things like that i've added lots of detail so i'm really pleased the way this has come out obviously orangey red it just doesn't suit um it has to be toned down so for me the next part is to weather the whole thing um add the definition and detail to match it in with the brickwork to the left under the bridge so um i think i'll grab some paints and we'll start off with some weathering techniques. Right, so I've got my wheels sheets, uh, some IPA um, with some solvent and some Woodland Scenics concrete, um, so colouring, some acrylics. So the idea here is to add the um, definition to the brickwork, uh, the sandstone that supports the bricks in the gaps in between. So just adding a couple of drops of the um, pigment which is the concrete colour, and then uh, a few squirts of IPA, and that will sort of dilute it down a little bit. But that will push that all into the crevices of the brickwork. So it's a case of a little mix round, uh, brush it all on, and dab it all off, usual techniques, and then you get to this kind of effect. I'm using the black acrylics uh, from Woodland Scenics, and I'm also using the rustic material. Now, I'm dry brushing the dark brown over the brickwork. This creates a rough sort of finish, a sandy sort of finish, which is a really good texture. Um, and once this sort of dries in, um, if you add a bit more black to it, you'll actually get a darker brickwork, which I'm trying to achieve. I need that engineering brown look. So once I've dry brushed, I let it dry a little bit and then add the blacks. The black will pick up some of the brown and it will tone it into different colors. So it's quite interesting using the two products together. Uh, so it's just an acrylic black and rust it, um, which is, you know, gives you a different effect on any material. So keep dry brushing that in, um, and then it's a case of just dabbing off lightly. Again, not pushing too hard. I didn't want to lose the uh, definition of the actual brickwork. And it's just color swatching to make sure that my brickwork matches um, to where I need it to be. And in the case it's just fast forward, get the rest of the brickwork to match and just tie it all in. And I think then I'll just give it a little airbrush with a little bit of black just to tie it all in afterwards. So just fitting it all together, just to see how it'll get an overall look. Um, still got lots to do, lots of little details. So it's time to carry on with grass, trees, and some other little projects I've got to do.
So another little thing I've got to make up is you can see I've left a little hole in the mold now, just about to cut out a bit more of the aperture. Now, this used to be quite common in the 80s on the railway, um, around the BR era. They used to have a little wall section, something like that, and a couple of walls either side. Um, I'm going to just stand that there for a second. And the idea was when a passing train was coming, a whistle would blow and the gang members would go and hide in this dugout uh, little wall section. And that was to the trains could pass and therefore they wouldn't get pulled into the track it was their safe area of working so i thought that'd be a good little feature to add uh, in this bit because there's obviously a lot of work goes on in this area so um i've got to make this up and i've got some little card and it'll be a couple of walls either side and i'll just knock these back a bit more and recess that in uh, to make a little safety area and a hard stand in So work is done, um, I've done lots and lots of things, I've redone all this area, redone all this down here, so it looks really good, really happy the way this has all come out, and I think everything now matches the way it should do. Um, and you could imagine that there's a road that goes around the back of there, uh, and then goes all the way around, feeding up to the bridge end down there, and I think if we just do a little scoop down there, you can see um, work-wise it looks really, really good. Um, the way it's all come out, and I'm really happy with the with the results. Uh, as always, uh, that's why we do these things, and just sort of catching different things. I didn't go too heavy with scenery here because you've got a little depot scene here, and I think it's quite good to have the look through so that everything's busy here, and then not too busy at the back there. So that was the reason I left um, not so much detail at the back there and kept it quite light. Um, it was quite a challenge to make this, um, I had to do it in small sections, some of these, but it actually come out really well. And I then redid all this area and tied in all the um, hills and all the bushes and trees and just sort of uh, matched it all up. And I think it looks really good, um, happy the way it's all turned out. <laughs>